It all depends on where they are in their evaluation prior to coming and see me. It depends on what we think is the uh, source of their pain. Um, some some uh, treatments are pharmacological, some treatments are physical therapy, if it's musculoskeletal. Uh, some treatments are surgical, uh, that someone that maybe identifies endometriosis. Uh, and so that's what makes it really difficult to come up with kind of a cookie cutter approach to patients because you can't do that. You have to individualize them and find out what is ailing them and also find out what is their most, um, uh, the thing that's bothering them most or what pain is bothering them most because they may have multiple sources of pain and you tailor your treatment towards that. So when someone's presenting with pelvic pain, um, you, one thing that you can try to assess for is whether the pain is neuropathic. And um, the, well, the first it starts with how they're describing their pain. Um, usually if it's neuropathic, it's gonna feel sharp or stabbing, or it may feel burning and searing, and it should follow the distribution of whatever peripheral nerve is affected. So they should follow a particular dermatome and a lot of times it may be related to an injury uh, in their past. It may say it started after I had a C-section or it started after um, I had a fall. Uh, and then with those clues, you can determine whether maybe they might have neuropathic pain or related to a peripheral nerve injury. Uh, and to confirm it, um, there's things that you can do a physical exam, but the best confirmation tool is to do a, a nerve block, a selective nerve block of the actual nerve that's affected and, um, and see if their pain is relieved by that nerve block. Most of our patients with chronic pelvic pain are gonna have a dysfunction of the pelvic floor. So they're gonna have what's called a hypertonic pelvic floor syndrome or spastic pelvic floor syndrome, which is involvement of the levator a muscles, opri internus muscles, piriformis muscles. And so um, the, the physical therapist that addresses those dysfunctions is a pelvic floor physical therapist. Um, there is um, not that many pelvic floor physical therapists around the country uh, because they're really specialized and they're treating women who have chronic pelvic pain. One of the newer drugs that's just been studied is a drug called Elagolix, which is a medication for the treatment of um, moderate to severe endometriosis. Um, this is a, a new medication that is a GRH antagonist um, that has come out and it's been a study that was on the New England Journal of Medicine uh, last year and is currently just being marketed by the, the company. Um, this is probably one of the, the newer drugs um, that is just tailored towards women who have chronic pelvic pain, which isn't that many. Uh, and um, that has probably been the most um, recent and more uh, well-known study that's come out. The thing to know is that most women who have chronic pelvic pain um, are suffering in silence. So it's not a topic that they like to bring up, it's not a topic that they'll talk to their family about or even their spouses about or their significant other. Uh, it's something that they end up internalizing. Uh, and I think that most women who have chronic pelvic pain want to tell their story, want to find someone who is listening to them and is going to take their symptoms seriously. And I think the first thing that, that anybody can do is just ask. Um, you know, ask about are you having uh, problems with pain? Are you having problems with pelvic pain? Or just simply asking about how their menstrual periods are. Uh, I think that's something that a lot of general practitioners or someone who's not really uh, focused in gynecology might just kind of skip over. Uh, but that can be um, a good opening question to try to identify someone with pelvic pain because most women who have chronic pelvic pain will have pain with their uh, periods.